Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. In the Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Yes, Lord, forgive us, God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I tell you, what a prayer. Amen. You know, a lot of us, we don't think about what I'm getting ready to talk about today, which is, uh, you know, has a lot to do uh, with how we feel about ourselves. You know, um, we're, we, we are on Facebook um, a lot. Uh, at least I'm not, but a lot of people are. Um a lot of people are on uh, social media a lot and we're taking, you know, selfies and photos of ourselves and we're doing, you know, things, uh, uh, you know, even talk, and voicing our opinion about different situations and things. But are we really doing the will of God? You know, um, we're going to come from Daniel chapter four today and we're going to talk about ungodly pride. It's OK to be, you know, proud of ourselves in a normal way that we say we graduated from college or we did something miraculous, uh, in the, 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 you know, in the, um, you know, as far as in the, um, you know, in the world, but there was a King named Nebuchadnezzar and in Daniel chapter four, it talks about him and I'm going to begin reading at the uh at, at verse one and we're going to read hopefully the entire chapter it is a long chapter so we may not get to everything we are going to kind of uh dodge the uh, some of the uh you know some of the scriptures here so that we can get a a, a real meaning you can read it the entire chapter in your own in your own uh time and so um um, as, as we go forth here, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to try to silence my phone and try to silence, uh, <laughs> try to silence, uh, you know, anything that might distract us this morning, because we really want to get into the word. Um, so, uh, we're going to be beginning at, uh, Daniel chapter four, verse one. It says, now Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations and languages that dwell in all of the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it was, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high, the, that of the high God has brought towards me. How great are thy signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Now, Nebuchadnezzar in verse chapter four goes into a dream. He said, I Nebuchadnezzar was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. And I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore, I made a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Now, how many of us know today that when God gives you a dream, you know, some of us don't even notice our dreams. Some of us don't even pay attention to our dreams. But uh, Nebuchadnezzar was a king that God had uh, made him king over the entire um, his whole kingdom. And uh, so he knew that God would talk to him and God would lead him. But he brought in everybody he knew that he thought God might use, including the magicians. It's verse seven. He said, came in the magicians the astrologers, I mean, people that served, you know, uh, that looked at the stars, the Chattanese, the soothsayers, the people that believed in witchcraft and people that could see, uh, you know, he thought, see things uh, of the future. And I told the dream before them and they, 
did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. So all these people that, that the king Nebuchadnezzar brought in could not interpret the dream. Now, as we know, the only one that could interpret the dream was Daniel. And uh, we'll see in just a moment. And, and verse 8, but at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belshazzar, ma uh, master of the magicians. He called him master of the magicians because he knew he was a God-fearing man, that he lived holy and he lived right. Behold, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubles thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. And thus was the visions of mine head in my bed. And I saw and behold a tree. Now he's beginning to tell him the dream. I saw a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. And the tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven. And the sight thereof to the end of all the earth, and the leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and as if uh, was meat for all. And the beasts of the field had sh uh, shadow, shadow uh, under it, and the fowls of the heaven, the well in the uh, broils thereof, and all the flesh was fed under it. And I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed, and behold, the watcher of the Holy One came down from heaven. And he cried aloud, and thus and said thus, Hew down the tree. In other words, cut down the tree. Cut off the branches. Shake off the leaves. Scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it. And the fowls from the branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of the roots in the earth even with a band of iron and brass and tender grass of the field and let it be wet with dew, with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts of the grass of the earth. Let the heart, let his heart be changed from a man's uh, and let the beasts of a heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. Wow. It's a lot to, to think about a king, uh, uh, but we, we'll keep going here. The manner of it was the decree of the watchers and the man by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whosoever it will and standeth and sitteth up over it the beasts of, of men, of the, the bases of men. I'm sorry. Uh, and in his dream, I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen now thou O Balchazer declare the interpretation thereof for for as much as uh, all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation but thou art able for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee and then Daniel spoke and told him he said whose name was Belshazzar was astonished for one hour so he, he didn't give him an answer, but it took him one hour to give a response to this thing. And the king spake in verse 19 and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or interpretation thereof trouble thee. And Belshazzar, <clears throat> and the interpretation thereof, okay, uh, trouble thee, he said. Okay, I'll put the phone a little closer. Belshazzar answered and said, My Lord, the dream be to them, Lord, the dream be unto them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thy enemies. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached to heaven, and the sight thereof as to the earth, to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much in it, was meat for all under which the beasts of the field dwell upon thy branches and the fowls of the heaven were their habitation. It is thou, O king, thou art grown and become strong and the greatness is, is grown and reaches unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth. 
And whereas the king saw the watcher and the holy one coming down from heaven saying, hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump and the roots thereof of the tree, even with the band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the most high which is come down my lord thy king that thou be that thou shall drive thee from men thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and they shall uh, and they and they shall uh, wet thee with the dew of heaven seven times shall pass over thee that means seven years till thou Know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whosoever he will. Wow. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree and the roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee after thou shalt have none that the heavens do rule. Um, wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by righteousness and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be lengthening to thy trans tranquility. All that came up, and all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. And at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Here it is 12 months later after he received the interpretation of Daniel or Belshazzar. He walked in the palace and nothing had happened to him yet. You know, and so, that's the way it is. When God prophesies to us, we, you know, we think, oh, ain't nothing going to transpire. There's nothing going to happen uh, to me. You know, um, nothing is going to take place. Nothing's going to happen. He said, the king spake and said, is it not the great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my, by the might and of my power and from the honor of my majesty while the word was in his mouth in the king's mouth there fell a voice from heaven saying o king nebuchadnezzar to thee it is spoken thy kingdom is departed from thee wow god just as soon as he began to boast within himself that this is my kingdom and isn't this the kingdom i built all of a sudden his kingdom was has was taken from him then and they shall drive thee from men and the welling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen seven times shall pass over thee thou shall know thou shall know that um, that the king or the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and was given unto it whoever he, he will the same hour was the, the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar which would drove him out from among men he did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with dew of heaven, till his hairs were were grown as eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. In other words, he got through those seven years. But you see, let me just talk to you for a moment. This is this is so good because. You know, we can get so high and we can get so mighty that we don't think anybody can touch us. We don't think that God himself can bring us down. <laughs> we don't think that nothing can, can happen to us. We get like we, we feel like we're invincible. Um, this was a king that was over Babylon. He was the king of Babylon and he was a great king. He was so great, in fact, that, uh, you know. I could just say that he, he was so great, in fact, that he thought he was everything to everybody. You know what I'm saying? And he felt he felt like that he was, um, you know, that he was the one that built the kingdom, but God had nothing to do with it. I mean, it, it was just a, a, it was ridiculous how he thought of himself. And God was tired of him thinking this way, talking this way. Uh, you know, sometimes we can, as they say, my mother, you say you get the smell in yourself. You know, we we think that the sun and the moon shine upon us. You know, it's all about us. You know what I'm saying? It's all about um, it's all about what we can do. It's all about our education, where we came from. It's all about, 
you know, um, our little group and I, us two and three and no more. And we don't think about uh, uh, where God has brought us from. And we don't give God any credit. We don't give God any praise. And so there comes the ungodly pride. Uh, God have a way of bringing us down to, to nothing. Uh, because sometimes we get big headed. We think we are Mrs. or Mr. It. But God have a way of, 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 of bringing us down to where that we... Um, to where that we have to honor him and admit that he's the one that brought us where we are today. And he's the one that has brought us this far. And I heard uh, Pastor Marvin get ready to say something. So I'm going to let him. He's on the phone today, by the way. And thank God for all of you that are watching and are listening. Um, good morning, Tony Watson. Good morning. Glad to see that you're uh, uh, listening in this morning. We have this every Saturday morning. We're going to start doing this every Saturday morning. We're going to give honor to God and have a Bible study online through uh, Bible Vision Ministries. And the topic today is on pride. Amen. It's on pride. Um, but go ahead. Um, Pastor Marvin is also on the phone. One of my very good friends. And uh, I'm, he, I'm, a, I'm a whole summer for right now. <laughs> I kind of forgot. I kind of forgot what I was going to say. Okay. All right. So we're coming from Daniel chapter four, Daniel chapter four. Those of you that are online that want to go to that chapter. And we started reading from the very first verse and we are now down to verse um, 34. Yeah. 34 where the King Nebuchadnezzar had had a dream and he um, had a dream that he was a, a bit, well, that he was a tree or that there was a tree and it reached heaven. And, but, uh, the tree got cut down, you know, and we, we're nothing, um, but the grass of the field, you know, we're, we're, we're like grass that, that the, that the sun comes down and, 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 um, we're, we're like the, the sun, sun, we're like flowers that fade away in God's eyesight. We are nothing, you know, uh, we can make our, um, um, we can make um, him, uh, we can make ourselves too big to where that nobody can tell us anything. Nobody can tell us that what, whatever we're doing is wrong. Nobody can tell us uh, anything. Nobody can teach us anything. We know everything. But, you know, uh, this king, he had done so much wrong. You know, you think about it, you got power as a king. You got power to, um, you know, kill people. You know, if you know, just at, at will because you want to, you got the power to deny people things, whether there may be poor people that have come before the king and asked him, you know, could you please, uh, uh, could we have a food for our family or can we have this or that? And the king would say, no, you know, there was this king was so powerful though, that he had power to, you know, he constantly went won battles and and wars, and you know, and he was looked at to be a great uh, uh, tyrant over the king, uh, over the uh, uh, the, the uh, country of Babylon. So we, we, as we look at King Nebuchadnezzar, God got sick. God got sick and tired of hearing how powerful he was. This king, um, God got tired of um, just dealing with this 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 tyrant. And, uh, you know, we, some of us, we're in, we have to watch it. Some of us, we're in uh, leadership positions. Some of us are pastors. Some of us are ministers. Some of us are, are, are bosses at work. Some of us, you know, God has given to us to be in charge. But, you know, with, 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 with leadership ability, with, 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 uh, with power comes great um, responsibility and God expects us not to abuse our authority. He expects us not to, um, he expects us not to, um, thank God for you, Miss Harris, joining us, Carrie Harris today. I just thank God for you. And, uh, we basically definitely want to, um, 
want to welcome all those that are just joining us. But we're talking about the God, the ungodly sin of pride this morning. And we're talking about, we're in Daniel chapter four. We're talking about Belshazzar, uh, Daniel, who was called Daniel back. But we, we also want to talk about King Nebuchadnezzar that had the dream that he was a tree and he grew up and he re reached heaven. And one of the angels came down or he's called in the Bible, a watcher came down and God said, cut the tree down. Cut the branches off and make him the well with the beast of the field. You know, um, pride has a way. Now, this king was was very powerful. He was a powerful king. He 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 had the power, like I said, at will to to kill people if he didn't like what they said or what they did. He had the authority to win battles. He constantly won battles and battle, uh, battles in Babylon. It was almost like who could mess with ba Babylon? Babylon, you know, because uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, that's a bad king. You know what I'm saying? But through it all, he took all the credit. He didn't give the glory to God to prove that. And when he had the dream a year before all of this happened to him, where he began to turn into this terrible looking beast. Because that's what he was supposed to do for seven years, because he refused to give glory and honor and praise to God for where God had brought him from. And so as we go higher into Christ or go higher into the call of God, we go higher. We need to get lower. We need to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, because he's the one. He's the only one that can do what he's done in our lives. I thank God. You know, I thank God on yesterday how, you know, uh, and I and I'm a pastor, but I still work a job. And so I've humbled myself to where that just because I'm a pastor don't mean I can't work for my living. You know, as a matter of fact, I have to work for my living um, because our ministry is a little is small right now. But I thank God because he's allowing me to have the mindset that, you know, I still can work for my living. I don't mind working for my living. I thank God for receiving a, a raise on yesterday. You know, it wasn't a whole lot, but thank God for the raise. Amen. And I thought about, I said, Lord, you know, um, you know, but the people in authority, they had to see that I was worthy of a raise, you know, and I thank God for that. But, you know, some people abuse their authority. They abuse their authority and refuse to acknowledge God when God will set them up in leadership. There are people on the job that got promotions. I didn't get one, but some people got promotions and were promoted to supervisors on my job. I have I work at a big company. And so I was, you know, really happy for them. But then, you know, those that get promoted walk around with big heads. They think, you know, <laughs> not saying that, you know, not saying that um, it's a bad thing um, for people to get promoted because it's a wonderful thing to be promoted and for God to shed, you know, even in ministry, it's a wonderful thing to get promoted and to be an, you know, apostle or to be a prophet or to be anything in leadership. But sometimes if we abuse our authority, God has a way of bringing us down. Amen. He has a way of letting us know who is really in charge or who is really in control. And so uh, as he went to Daniel, he went to all the astrologers and everything. He wanted to know what his dream meant. And nobody could interpret his dream but Daniel. And uh, Daniel, he said, was, was the one that had the knowledge of the holy gods in him. He served the almighty God. God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And when, when he, he uh, went to Daniel and told him who the tree was, Nebuchadnezzar, I, I know he had a weird look on his face like, what? It's me. What are you talking? You know, so uh, when, when God reveals to us, sometimes God deals with us in dreams, a lot of us, and we sometimes we're not even paying attention to our dreams, but God is dealing with to us in with us in dreams and visions, and we need to pay attention more to our dreams. Back in the day, that's all they did was pay attention to their dreams because they knew that God was speaking, that there was messages in their dreams. So the king wasn't wasn't uh you know unknowledgeable about this whole fact. So he went to Daniel to ask the interpretation. But when he did, he didn't like the answer he received. And and I, I thank God because as a result of the answer that he received, he went away thinking, well, 
I don't know if I believe that or not. And he went on about his merry way. Isn't that what happens sometimes when God judges our sin? Isn't that what happens sometimes when somebody tells us, you know, what God is telling them to tell us and we don't hearken, we don't pay attention to it. You know, we go on at and as if things were just like they were. And, oh, that's just, you know, that's just them. It's nothing's going to happen to me. Nothing's going to occur. Well, let me tell you, I don't look at myself as so much as a prophet, but I have prophesied to many and they have come true. I prophesied to my mother who um, she um, she was looking for. Well, she, I wouldn't say she was looking for a husband, but she was desiring a husband. And this man came to the church and I told her, I said, that's going to be your husband. And she said, that can't be because he's still, he's still married. And I said, no, he's going to, you know, his wife is going to get sick and, and she's going to die. And she, she looked at me and she said, really? I said, yeah. It wasn't but a year later or so. And uh, they were working together at Walmart. My, my mother and you know, the man that she married. Um, and, uh, but he's, uh, he's going on home now. He's passed away. But, uh, you know, when people come to you and tell you stuff, you, you, you're like, what, really? Is, is that really true? Well, God has real people in the world. God has real people, real prophets in the world. I remember my first husband and, my, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, married to, my first husband, I'm married to my second husband, but my first husband passed away. But before my first husband died, I told him, I said, you know, if you don't come back home and, 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 and treat me right and do what you're supposed to by me, you're going to die. He didn't believe me. He didn't believe nothing I was saying to him. He said, well, me and JC got our own thing going on. I said, oh, oh okay. Yeah, you, you and JC got your own thing going on. All right. It wasn't, but a, it was about a year later. And he went ahead and divorced me and everything. Left me with my, my, my beautiful two children. Uh, and he, um, in March, he divorced me. And in December, he died. That March, and I, I was, and the Lord said, stop praying. Stop praying for him to come home. Stop, stop praying for this man. And I said, Lord, why? He said, no, I, I'm not hearing no more of your prayers. Don't, don't pray no more for this man. He was, he's rejected you. He's rejected me. He's rejected our work that, that we're supposed to do. He's rejected you. So now I'm rejecting him. You know, it's powerful. You don't hear things like that because people think you're crazy or people feel like, oh, you know, God don't do things like that anymore. God does and God will. Um, you don't, you don't do faithful people wrong. If you're married, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to your husbands today. I'm talking to the wives today. You don't do people wrong and then expect for God not to step in. Hmm? I don't care if it's on the job. I don't care if it's in a marriage. I don't care if it's in your home. You don't, you don't do God's people wrong and then expect for God not to retaliate. He said, vengeance is mine. I shall repay. It's true that to, in this day and time, it looks like you're getting away. And as you can see in the scripture, it took Nebuchadnezzar a whole year before he saw the prophecy come to pass, but it came to pass. And so us as children of God, we have to understand that just because uh, uh, we don't see it right then, and it's not happening to me, that don't mean it ain't going to happen. God is always speaking and he's always talking to his people, telling them, thus saith the Lord. He's always trying to get our attention. But if we don't listen, if we don't take heed to the warning of the prophets, of the pastor, of the preachers, of, of, of people that know God, then we're going to be destroyed. Now, God had mercy. Now, this is a lesson on pride this morning, a lesson on pride because we find in our world, that's all we have. That's all you see. All people care about is themselves and they do other people wrong and they, they feel like they're getting by. It, you know, people have a good environment. Talent. Well, I'm not hurting anybody. Nobody knows about it, but God knows. God knows. See, Nebuchadnezzar had in his mind, I'm king. I can do what I want. Ain't nobody going to stop me. I, I created this kingdom. Did you? Or did God help you? Did God create it? 
You know, it, it's a sad thing to um, it's a sad thing to um, to think that we've got it all in control, that we are running our own life and our own world and God has nothing to do with it. It's a lie. It's a lie straight from Lucifer. It's a lie. God has everything to do. He said the very hairs on your head are numbered. Why would he say that if it wasn't true? Your destiny, your purpose in life has been ordained by God. Everybody watching me today, your destiny is ordained by God. What you're supposed to do in your life. This man was supposed to be a king. He was supposed to be a godly king, but he wouldn't listen to God's people. He wouldn't do right by God's people. And as a result, he got the judgment of God on his life. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to have to go through that. I don't want to have to go through, okay, God sets me up high and then he brings me down. I, I don't want that. Lord, help me to stay humble. Help me to stay righteous before God. Help me to do the right thing. No matter how high Bible Vision Ministries get, no matter how big it gets, no matter what happens, I want to stay low. Lord, bring, help me to stay low. Help me to stay to where that uh, God can use me, that the anointing can flow out of my life to others and I don't get the big head about it and I don't treat people wrong in the process. Help me, God. You know, so we got some churches like that. People get so high up in the church, you know, and I, I'm, I'm close to the pastor. And so me and the pastor are like that. So, you know, you don't mess with me. And it's, it's sad. And then God has to bring the whole ministry down. You know, uh, I can tell you about another incident. Uh, there was a pastor I was visiting. At the time, I wasn't pastoring in. I was just old minister at the time. <laughs> good morning, Sherry Webb. Good morning to you, Sister Webb. Good to, good to see you. I was uh, a minister at the time, and I was going to their to, to the church, and they had communion. But they were serving wine, real wine, in communion. And uh, I... Uh, the Lord said, don't you take communion this morning because I don't drink. So I don't believe that God's will is for God's people to drink. But um, after the service and everything, I didn't take communion. I, I declined it. And uh, I went to the pastor's study. And I, I took the pastor uh, in confidence. Uh, God didn't lead me to go prophesy to the whole church. He told me to go to the pastor directly. So I went in his pastor's study and I said, may I talk to you for a moment? He said, yes, daughter, come on in. I said, um... God says that uh, what you're doing in communion here is, is wrong. He said, uh, he said, God, God, God doesn't like that you're serving liquor. It is, you know, that if you don't stop it, that your whole ministry, that your, your whole household is coming down. Every, everything that you, that you're doing here. And he had a nice big church. Uh, he said that your sins are going to find you out. Don't, don't, don't continue to serve wine at communion. God is saying today that, that, that he's going to bring the whole, whole church down. Don't stop doing it. And, you know, some, some, some years later, I found out and I heard uh, that his ministry, uh, that he was sleeping around in, you know, in, in the church and whatnot with, with one, different ones. And then not only that, and that him, him, him and his whole ministry broke up, him and his wife and everything, just everything just toddled down, just like I told him it would happen. Um, and so, you know, when, when people come to you and, and tell you, thus saith the Lord, what God is telling them, don't just toss it aside and say, oh, you know, really, but you better take heed. If you know you in the wrong, you doing something that's not godly and you, you get corrected. God wants you to correct that. So you won't get the damnation that's going to come to you. This man got covered up in feathers. And was was cast out of his own kingdom to dwell with the beast of the field because he just wouldn't change. He wouldn't give glory to God. He wouldn't do what was right. 
I mean, do do we do? Does anybody want the God to bring them up to where He did, everybody can see Him and then bring them down? God never wants that for anyone. But we do it to ourselves because of the sin of pride. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. You know, I, I went to school. I've got this many degrees. And who cares? About your knowledge. God is the one that gave you the intelligence you have. It's not because of your PhDs that make you who you are. God made you who you are. And it's he that gets the glory. He gets the glory for everything that we do in Bible vision. I, I, I'm nothing. I'm going to be honest. I, I'm, I'm nothing without Christ. I, I, I can't breathe without him. I can't move without him. I can't do nothing without Jesus. So, I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'm humbled this morning. I, I can't do anything without the Lord. And I, I wouldn't try. I wouldn't try. I wouldn't even try, try to preach a sermon without him being in my life. I wouldn't even, if I had sin in my life, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even get on Facebook. I wouldn't even try. But because of uh, the power of the Lord and because he said, go, that's the only reason why you see me today. He told me to go and I'm, I'm here. And I'm preaching the gospel today because he told me to go years ago, told me to go. And so um, as we talk this morning, I, I am going to open up the the mic for I do have Pastor Marvin on the line. If he's got anything that he wants to say at this time, I'm going to give him the opportunity to say something. Uh, anyone even in the Facebook audience, I'll give you the opportunity to say something as far as what you type and I'll kind of read it. Um so uh, definitely, if you have anything, I would like to hear it at this time. Pastor Marvin. Uh, <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't really talked about the prophecies that I've given over in the in the past because I don't want to look, you know, anybody looking at me as a prophet because I don't really. You know, I don't have prophetess by my name, but God does talk to me. Amen. He does talk to me. And so I just thank God for using me. I'm I'm, I'm nothing but a, 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 a blade of grass, you know, that is here today and going to mark flower that fades away, just like the rest of us. But I want God to use me. Who doesn't want to be used by God? But you got to be in a, in a place to be used. And God is tired of people in leadership not doing what he has called them and want them to do. He's tired of people that have been called to do a certain thing. You have a gift and God has blessed you and you're not doing what God has told you to do with that gift. Well, judgment can come on you because you're not using the gift that he gave you the right way. Here's a king who God said, enough is enough. I'm tired of dealing with you. And how you're treating my people. Yes, you're king, but you ain't God. Huh? That's what he said. Yes, you're king, but you ain't God. You don't have the power that I have. I gave you a little and you didn't abuse my power, what I gave you. So now I'm going to let you stay in the field for seven years. I'm going to let you realize who really is God. You know, in, in the scripture here, it says that he came to himself in verse 35. It says he came to himself uh, after, at the end of his, the days of the seven years. He said, I never could chance, I'm sorry, verse 34. Never could chance, I lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and mine understanding returned unto me. Now he had the mind of a beast. But he realized he wanted himself. And I bless the most high and praise and honor him that liveth forever. He should have done that to begin with. Why can't we give God honor and glory now when we are in the position that we're in? Why can't we do it now? Why do we have to wait until God brings us down? What, what, why, why is that? He said, I praise and honored him that liveth forever and ever, whose dominion is everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from the generation to generation. And all the inhabitation of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. In other words, God does what he wants to do. He's sovereign. He do what he want to do. And none can stand, can stay his hand and say unto him, what doest thou? Because it ain't nobody's business. What God, what you doing? 
it's, 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 it's a bad thing to even say, God, what you're doing, because he always knows what he's doing. Isn't that something? And at the same time, any reason return, my reason returned unto me and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my lords sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty as was added unto me. In other words, he, after he began to return to God and gave God praise and gave him honor for his kingdom and stopped trying to take the kingdom in. And, and say it was all his and God had nothing to do with it, then his reasoning, his understanding, his whole mind came back. Can we say today that some people that are in the mental institutions today, that might be what's wrong. Maybe God has turned them over to a reprobate mind. You, you think that might be what, what's happening in the mental institutions today? Why, when people lose their mind? Huh? You, you think it when people begin to live perverted lifestyles that they mind goes away from them. Now, if God can give a mind to a, you know, uh, to a man like a beast, you know, God said he turned us over to a reprobate mind. If we, you know, we, uh, uh, stayed in our sin and he kept talking to us, you know, sometimes God just keeps talking to us and talking to us and not, you know, and, and nothing gets into nothing gets to us. We can't, God can't get to us. So what happens is God got to get us out of our mind. He's got to turn us into a lunatic. In one scripture, he said it cast out the devil out the lunatic. It's in the scripture. Praise God, where he cast out the devil. In, the lun in other words, mental people, they're taking depression medications. They're taking all kinds of stuff. I told you last week, I, I, don't, I don't take medication at all, but it's because of the glory of God. It ain't because of me. It's because of the glory of God in my life and the power of God heals my body. But you think the people in the mental institu institutions, maybe that's what God did is turn them over to a reprobate mind like he did this king, Nebuchadnezzar. Instead of taking your, your, your depression medications, instead, I'm sorry if I'm stepping on somebody's toes. I'm really sorry. But instead of taking your, your, your AHD medications and all this stuff and going to a psychological counseling. Do you think you just need to seek God and recognize who he is? Do you think that that might be what we need to do? Uh, so that God won't turn us over and give us up to the devil and, and let us go. Now, judgment is different for each person. For this king, he went mental. Some of us die because we're just too hard headed. God said, I'm tired of talking to you. I keep telling you the same old thing. I told you to repent. I told you to repent, but you won't repent. So now I'm going to have to judge you. Huh? I don't want God to give me up. I don't want God to judge me. Huh? God will give, start giving you dreams. I'm like, what, is, what does that mean? What does that mean? God is judging you, getting ready to judge you, tell you what's, what's going on in your life and tell you what he's about to do. But see, Nebuchadnezzar, even though he heard what was going to happen to him, he didn't even believe it. He didn't even believe it. It took a year. God gave him a whole year. Look at the mercy of God. God gave him one year to just think about the dream and, and, and the change. One year. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. So what happened? Judgment had to come. He had to dwell with the beasts of the field. Now, verse 37 says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. He realized that was, he wasn't the only king in the world. He realized that there was a, somebody bigger than him. Somebody's bigger than me and you. Remember that, people. Remember that there's somebody bigger than me. I remember somebody bigger than me and you. It's Jesus Christ. He's the God. Our father, which is in heaven, is, is greater than me and you. Could ever be. He said, and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are true and his ways are a ways of judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Look at God. Oh, he brought a king down. Those that walk in pride, he's able to humble. He's able to abase. Huh? God is able. You, you, I look, they say the, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard a lot. The bigger they are, the harder God will bring you down to nothing. You got to wake up and remember that Jesus is Lord. 
He's Lord over the entire world. It don't matter if the politicians think they big and bad. It's only God that's controlling this thing. It's God that's in control of this thing. And God will bring you down. He'll bring you down. We must obey. We must keep in prospect whatever God gives us. It's just for a time. It's just for a season. We're just, we're just here for a, a, a small, a, a little bit of time. And in that time, let's make a difference. Let's do the will of God. Let's do what God has called us to do in that little time that we have. Because after a while, it's going to be too late. And the sun is going down. Amen. The sun is going down. Eventually, the sun goes down in each and every one of our lives. We we all have to die. We all have to get out of here and leave this world. And let's leave it being remembered for doing what God told us to do, what God told us to say. Amen. I mean, this is this is deep because, you know, we don't think about pride. We, we find people getting on Facebook and uh, oh, we, we buy a home. We're doing this. We're doing that. Wonderful. Give the glory to God. We just graduated from college. Give the glory to God. Give God the glory. He's the one. He's the only one. Huh? I just got married. Give the glory to God. You're going to need him in that new marriage. Give the glory to God. He's the one. He's the only one. Amen. Praise God. I, I, I really uh, thank God for this lesson because uh, I was as I was reading over it, I said, Lord, I, Lord, don't let there be not one ounce of, of ungodly proud pride found in me. I want to be humble enough to where if a little little child come to me and tell me something. I'm willing to listen and, and hear what he's got to say. I don't want to ever be to where that I feel like I'm too big for my britches, you know, and I thank God for that. You know, um, there are a lot of times that God gives me things or gives gives me a blessing. And I, I give the glory to God immediately because it's not me. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Like I was telling somebody earlier or, or telling you guys earlier, I received a raise this week on the job. Thank God for the leadership of my job. Thank God they saw, saw enough in me to give me a little raise. Amen. It won't a whole lot, but thank God for the raise. Amen. I give the glory to God about that. Anytime that God increases you, anytime God does anything for you, give the glory to God. It ain't nothing. It ain't got nothing to do with you. God is the one. He's the only one. He deserves all honor and praise. But like I said, this is just a little thought I wanted to share with the Facebook out there, Facebook friends. And truly, it's a blessing to be able to come to you this morning and in the comfort of your own homes or on your cell phones or wherever you come, you know, I'm coming to you at. I want to want you to know that the kingdom, the power of the kingdom of God is in you. Praise God. And uh, at this time, last remarks before we dismiss. Uh, but I just wanted to say that God help us not to have this kind of pride. I don't ever want to be this proud to wear that, you know, it's okay to have a small amount of pride and be thankful for, you know, but have it in the right way. This king was doing bad things in, in his position, in a leadership position, thinking nobody could, nobody was not going to get him for doing that. Hey, yeah, I'm king. You know what I'm saying? Who can stop me? You know what I'm saying? But God will bring you down. Amen. God will bring you down. Praise God. What were you um, saying? It looked like you were going to say something, Pastor uh, uh, Marvin. Anything? Uh, I'm lost for words today. <laughs> I'm lost for words today. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Well, you know, listen, I ain't trying to get nobody. I'm just trying to obey God and do what God is telling me to do this morning. But I, at this time, I'm going to end with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus and we repent this morning for any pride that we have in our life, any kind of any, any kind of sin where we feel in like that we are big in an area and you're small. God, we just repent this morning and we command the devil to loose our, his hole in our lives when it comes to how we look, whatever it is that we might be proud about this morning. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. You are the head. We are the tail this morning. And believe you me, I don't ever want to be in judgment for anything that I'm so proud about. But God, I ask you this morning that you touch the listening audience. Help us to understand that it's everything that we have in this world belongs to you. It was yours before. It is going to be yours when we're gone. 
We thank you and we praise you. Every gift, every everything that we have belongs to you. You get the glory. You get the honor for this ministry. Lord, you get you. Lord, it's all about you. You are the king of king and Lord of Lord. I couldn't possibly begin to run the world like you have. And, and, and we pray for the leadership and as far as the president of the United States. We pray for everyone in leadership positions. It's a great responsibility and you will be judged for your decisions that you make. God, we ask you in Jesus' name to touch the listening audience today and help us uh, search ourselves. Search me, Lord, and if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten us, God. Help us not to walk in pride. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we thank you for tuning in. Next Saturday, we will be uh, we will be um, also um, uh, coming again with a different uh, message. We talked about pride. It will be on something else next Saturday. But we truly are grateful and thankful for you that are listening. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.